Hi, welcome back. First time here visiting? My name is Melanie. Today I have so much planned and I have so much to share with you guys. The first thing I want to point out is I am giving you ideas on how you can decorate with those thrifted items that you find because that's pretty much all I buy. I buy very little full price at retail stores. Then I have a sweet little primitive country DIY to share with you and it turned out adorable and I definitely think you're going to want to try recreating something like this. And then we're going to head into my living room and that's where the excitement is going to start because that's where I decorated. But you can use these ideas and incorporate them in any room of your home. I recently found this sweet little lamp at Goodwill for just a few dollars. I don't know if this was actually made in a factory or if somebody made it by hand because this is actually the second one like this that I saw at Goodwill. And they were at two different Goodwills, but I passed on the first one because it just wasn't in very good condition. So this would be something that would really be easy to recreate if you're crafty. This lampshade I've had for years and I'm going to use it for this DIY. This DIY lampshade is not my brainchild. I saw someone on Pinterest do it and I loved it. If I'm able to link them, I will be sure to include that in my description box. Right now I'm just cutting away all of the existing fabric because all I really want is the frame. I'm just gonna give it a little cleaning and what I'm doing is using a piece of twine to get a good measurement. I'm using this piece of twine as my measuring tape. These are the fabrics that I'll be using. Aren't these colors wonderful? And one thing that I really love is that these colors will tie in perfectly with every room of my home. So if I get tired of this lamp being in one room, I can always move it to another area. I'm going to start with just a little cut. Then I'm going to tear my fabric the rest of the way because I like the rough edge because it just gives it a little bit more rustic appearance. And I'm going to cut this fabric or tear this fabric to about one to one and a half inches wide. I know time is precious, so I'm not going to show you me wrapping every single one of these because it is going to take a while. And actually, it took me about an hour to wrap this whole entire lampshade, so that's not too bad. So I'm just going to do a few of these just so you get the idea. And what I'm going to do is alternate. I'm going to put a knot at the top, then the next one I'm going to flip it around and put the knot at the bottom. This way I'm going to have some fabric fringes at the top of my lampshade and at the bottom. I think that's just going to give it a more finished, polished look. It's going to definitely give it more texture and it's also just going to look a little bit more pretty because even though I like rustic, primitive, I still like my home and my decor to look pretty. I am trying really hard to keep a pattern, but what I did find is as I got further into this, I had to really try and concentrate on keeping these going straight because I did have to take a couple off because they just got crooked and then it just threw the whole look off. So if you're going to try this, just really um, try to be getting these pieces of fabric going in a straight direction. And also at the end, whenever I was almost finished, I did have to go and cover up a few areas where light was showing through that there wasn't good coverage. So there was a little bit of overlapping and you'll see at the end, it was absolutely fine. It didn't affect the look in any way. It still looked absolutely beautiful. So here is what it looks like before I fancy up these edges. So what I'm gonna do is just give this a little cut, just like a little haircut. And because I don't want them too long. So I'm starting out 
just by doing a few because, you know, measure once or <laughs> measure twice, cut once. So I can't make it any longer if I've already cut it. And here is what it all looks like after I got it all tidied up. I love this. I think this is so cute and I can't wait to show you how it looks. Here I had some extra pieces of fabric and I this is what I cut off of my lampshade. I didn't want to throw it away so I just made a little wee garland and I'm going to also use this in my decor that I'll be sharing with you. If you've been following my channel, you might remember seeing this in one of my recent videos. If you didn't and you're curious, I'll be sure to link those videos below in my description box. If you have a little area or a small wall that you really want to accent and just aren't sure how, half moon tables are a perfect way to accent a small space. I found this little half moon table last year at Goodwill and all I did was change the color. I bought a couple cans of spray paint. It's actually the textured spray paint. And let me see if I can just get a little bit closer so that you might be able to see the texture on that. Do you see that? I really am happy with how it turned out and I only paid a few dollars for this. And the only thing here that I bought retail was this clock. And I purchased that at the Christmas tree shop, but I didn't pay full price for it. I got it for $6. The little sheep, I also bought that at the Crossroads Country Mall. And this little scarf, isn't that cute? Or a little doily, I guess it's probably a little doily. I purchased that at Goodwill and it's made like a half circle so it's perfect for this table it's almost like they were meant to be together and here i don't think i ever shared either of these with you guys so what i did was i stacked some of the nesting boxes how many of you have the nesting boxes nesting boxes are great anywhere you can tuck them in a corner you can put them on a mantle you can put them on a stand, under a stand like I did here. Nesting boxes are fantastic. And I actually have another set of nesting boxes and I'll show you where I placed those just to give you another idea. And this little rooster, it takes a candle and it actually hangs, but I don't have a great place to hang it. So I thought it would look so cute just to tuck it right back in there. So as you can see, you don't need to add a lot of items to a small space. All you need to do is add the right pieces and it can really add a lot of charm to your home. This is the other area in my home that I mentioned I have those nesting boxes. I'm just gonna get back in here because I have it tucked back in this corner here, but they look so sweet. I also purchased these nesting boxes at the Crossroads Country Mall. See, don't those look so cute? They just give that a little bit of curiosity. When you have guests over and they're looking at your house, how you have it decorated, and they notice something in the corner and they're like, oh, what's that? What do you have back in there? And then what I did up above was added these hot plates. Aren't they sweet? They're very old. Um, well, not very old, but I think they're from the 60s or 70s, maybe even as early as the 50s. And these were a good little find. They look so cute. All I had to do was uh, glue the little hangers because the hangers were starting to get a little bit loose, but they remind me of um, Pennsylvania Dutch and I'm actually originally from Pennsylvania, so these are perfect. 
My subscriber friend Colleen sent me this beautiful picture. Notice how she placed her nesting boxes on her mantle. She is such a wonderful decorator. Her whole mantle looks amazing. I had the pleasure of meeting Colleen and her sister Carol a few weeks ago when I was redoing my booth at the Crossroads Country Mall. Here's how my lamp turned out. What do you think? I love this. I am so happy with the result. And I'm curious, have any of you ever tried making something like this? I really think I want to make another one. Even if I can't find another basket like this, I'm sure I could convince my hubby to help me make one because I really don't think it would be that difficult. And hey, I can even try and make it myself if I have the ambition. And what I did was just tucked some decorative balls down inside. And I think that looks really sweet. I could pretty much put anything in there, but I didn't want to put florals or flower or greenery because I really wanted to stick with the primitive touch. So I thought just to add some little decorative balls would be really sweet. And like I said, that the lamp shade prior to me decorating it, I purchased it at Goodwill. I purchased this basket at Goodwill. These balls I've had forever. And I think they originally might've came from Walmart. Uh, I did purchase both of these placemats, but this end table, actually both of my end tables, and I have a coffee table that match this. And they were originally my husband's great grandma's, but then they went to his aunt. His aunt no longer wanted them, so she gave them to us, gosh, I bet you almost 20 years ago. And here's how I decorated underneath this stand. And I'm just gonna get a little bit closer for you. I'm actually going to get from a different angle. So that is actually the mini garland that I just made. And I like it that I used them both on the same area because they tie in so nicely together. And you can use garlands so many places in your home. They look great tucked in a dough bowl. They look great on mantles, windows, curtains, anywhere. You can put them on a shelf. This little bird was also a Goodwill find. This beautiful pitberry basket, I just purchased that at the Crossroads Country Mall and I only paid a few dollars for it. And I love it that it already had that sweet little bow because it ties in perfectly with all of these other fabrics that I used in the garland and the lampshade. The dough bowl, I did purchase that. I purchased it actually at TJ Maxx a couple of years ago, but little birds and stuff like this, I mean, you can put them anywhere. Anywhere your heart desires, you can tuck a cute little bird in. And that one is actually a cast iron bird. So he's quite heavy and he is adorable. Goodwills, thrift stores, and country malls are all fantastic places to buy wall art. These three metal wall hangings, I purchased them all the same day at the exact same Goodwill for only a few dollars each, and they are really nice sized. I wanted to accent my wall hangings, so I found these beautiful sconces at Hobby Lobby. I bought them when they were on sale for 50% off. Look at the detail on these wall hangings and they are in fantastic condition. I believe Hobby Lobby still carries these. If they're still on their website, I'll link it below in my description box. Everything you see here on the top of this table was thrifted. The table I bought a couple years ago off of Amazon. 
You can find a lot of lanterns in all shapes and sizes at Goodwills and thrift stores. This little scoop I purchased at the Crossroads Country Mall. And if you have a scoop like this and you don't wanna just lay it like this, you could get really creative and hang it and place a candle on it. You could also insert it into a basket and attach the whole basket and scoop to your wall with a candle on it. Add a little bit of pit berry. That would look adorable. These books came from the Over the Moon Variety Shop. I shared that recently in one of my videos. And look at this primitive rabbit. Oh my goodness. I think this is so adorable. And I believe it has the grunge, I think it's called the grunge or grubby um, effect done to this because it is really stiff, but this is so primitive. Look at the face. Oh my goodness. Absolutely adorable. And this is the feet. Now this is a burlap coffee bean bag. I also found this at the Crossroads Country Mall. I flipped it over just for how I'm decorating right now because I thought it would just clash with the writing, but I specifically wanted it for the coffee bean writing on it because I just think it's really unique. I also bought this a couple of years ago at Goodwill and you can use pieces like this anywhere in your home. This style of a vignette does not have to strictly be for the living room. It can be for anywhere in your home. Burlap bags look great used as table runners, curtains stuffed inside of a box, used as garland. There are so many uses for burlap and burlap bags. And they don't cost too much at all. I think I pay two to three dollars each for these bags. And I think that's quite a fair price because they have so many uses. You can decorate with old books anywhere in your home. They also make great risers. Stack them up, place a candle or a lantern on top, even a little figurine, Anything that you can imagine can look great on books. Little bird nests also look wonderful, tucked almost anywhere in your decorating. Well, that's it for today's video. I really hope I was able to inspire your decorating and give you some ideas on how you can decorate with thrifted items. I'll see you again soon. Take care.